guys, I'm Regina from Telehome May and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we are going to make a oldie, but a oh so goody. We're gonna make some chicken and waffles, but instead of topping it with a little maple syrup, a little powdered sugar, we're gonna make some brandy honey infused peaches to top that thing off with and it is oh so good y'all it is delicious okay honey brandy peaches that sounds like something that should be on and off of the plate <laughs> so while i get ready and i set up i'm gonna need you to go grab a pen go grab a notepad so you can take down these ingredients and join me right here back in the kitchen before i show you guys the ingredients let's just discuss the elephant in the room i recorded and then deleted the start of this video a total of five times before i even realized that this was in the background now the perfectionist in me was like oh my god I need to delete that because somebody's going to be offended. <laughs> the Regina that keeps it real is like, this is how everybody in the world feels right now. So it's staying put. <laughs> so if this offends you, I don't know what to tell you because on this channel, we are blunt. We can be vulgar, but... We will always be tasty. So before we start our waffle batter, one, you wanna make sure you have your waffle arm heating up. Then you're going to start the marinade for your chicken. I'm gonna use chicken breast. So you just take some chicken breasts, like so. You're gonna put them in a bowl. I don't know if you can see it. With one egg, you're gonna take some all about the bird spice from Telehome Made. Shake that on top. Milk. And a little lemon juice. And you're probably like, Regina, that's a weird combination. Milk and lemon juice. This is the thing. I'm out of buttermilk. If you mix regular milk with a little bit of lemon juice, it will give you the flavor of buttermilk. It won't be the same texture, but it will definitely give you the flavor. Take a fork. This is if you're scrambling the eggs and you want to Mix your chicken in this. Throw your fork in the sink. And then we're going to put your bowl in the fridge while you start your waffles. So for your waffles, this is what you're gonna need. All-purpose flour. Vanilla eggs, sour cream, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, butter, and milk. Other things you're going to need is your pan for frying, your bowl for mixing, measuring cups so y'all ready y'all ready to teach Let's... one of my friends how to make waffles via text message for i don't know maybe two three months and for whatever reason she cannot get her waffles to come out thick like she like them so let me give you guys a few suggestions on how to make sure your waffles or any baking comes out properly. One, 
If you are making waffles and you prefer thicker waffles, get a Belgian waffle maker. I'm going to link one below. Um, it's a huge difference. If you have a traditional waffle maker, your waffles will always come out thin. That's just what it is. Another suggestion is you wanna make sure you change your baking soda as well as your baking powder. Every six months is a standard, but I typically swap mine out every three months. One of the biggest reasons why people mess up their waffles is because they over measure. And you're probably like, Regina, what's over measuring? Let me show you. So, for example, this recipe calls for two cups of flour. The average person will stick their measuring cup in their flour and say, oh, this is a cup of flour because all of the flour is in the cup when actually this is more than a cup of flour because you see how it's kind of like a flour mountain over the cup. The cup itself stops right here. Therefore, when you measuring your flour, your flour should stop right here. So this is not a cup of flour. This is more like a cup and a half of flour. If the recipe is calling for two cups of flour, for example, and you put two cups like this, instead of putting two cups of flour, you just put three cups of flour. So what you do, you go take all of that off the top. Boom, you got one cup of flour. So you have flour, baking powder, sugar, baking soda, take your whisk. It's really important that you mix all your dry ingredients first, not just for waffles, but for anything that you're making. Then we are going to add milk, eggs, you're going to add your eggs one at a time and mix, one at a time and mix. The reason why you want to mix your dry ingredients first is because you don't want to just throw all your dry ingredients into your bowl and then add your wet ingredients and then mix because it may be a situation where all of your baking powder is stuck on one side and all of your baking soda is stuck on another side. Once you add the wet ingredients, it kind of acts like glue in a sense. So in that situation, your baking powder and your baking soda it's not properly measured out evenly. So you're gonna end up with a flat cake, a flat waffle, whatever. I'm gonna mix that. We have one more egg. We're gonna mix that egg. Make sure you mix it real good. You want to make sure you mix it real good. Your batter should be kind of thick and hard to mix. It should be kind of like this at this point. You see that? You want to make sure you mix it well because you're going to add melted butter. If you don't mix your eggs well, if you add heat like melted up, um, melted butter, you're going to have scrambled eggs in your batter. So it's very important to mix everything properly. Pour your melted butter in. Mix. 
Now, while you're doing this, your waffle iron should be warming up. Lastly, you're gonna take some sour cream. Never have too much. Mix that up. Now, at this point, you can start baking your waffles. But me, I like to give my waffles a little extra flavor. So, we're going to take some lemon extract and we're going to put it right in our batter. Well, let's, let's put a little bit more. You can never have enough vanilla. Now, if I'm moving too fast for you, do not worry. The recipe is on my website. And if you didn't have time to get a pen and a notepad to take down the ingredients, if you subscribe to our website, you can download our app in the App Store, um, Apple App Store, or Android App Store, and you can just log in and follow the recipe on your iPad or any tablet that you have. So, your waffle on is hot. I'm gonna take an unused measuring cup, open my waffle pan. I already greased it. We're gonna take a scoop of our batter. It should be thick like this. If it's runny, you did something wrong. <laughs> and you're gonna pour that right on top. Let's add a little more. And then we're going to close it. Depending on what type of waffle arm you have, your waffle arm will tell you when it's ready. If you have a traditional waffle arm, you'll have two colors on the top. It will be either blue or green. Once it turns green, that's typically when your waffle is ready. You can just open it, remove the waffle. So I just wanted to tell my followers who either don't eat dairy or um, don't like white or bleached flour. It's several substitutions you can make to this recipe to get the waffles perfect for you. For example, instead of using traditional self-rising flour, you can always substitute that flour for a wheat flour or a gluten-free flour. If you don't like dairy, you can always substitute vitamin D milk or buttermilk, which is my preference, with a almond milk. It tastes delicious. And if you are someone that likes more of a savory chicken and waffles, instead of using vanilla extract, you can always add maybe some chives, you can add a little parsley, you can even add some cheese. Gouda and Monterey Jack cheese is absolutely delicious in a waffle. Oh. Let's see if it's ready. Yes. Now that is a beautiful, golden, thick waffle. Look at that, it's perfect. Just take your scoop again and pour it right on top, y'all. Right on top. So, since we have one more waffle left, I'm gonna show you all how to change the game a little bit. So we have our waffle batter. I have some mild cheddar cheese. We're gonna sprinkle some in that batter. We have some freeze dried ginger. Shake a couple in there. We have some fresh chives that has been chopped already. We're gonna sprinkle that in there. Then, 
we're going to take some fresh cayenne. And when I say fresh, y'all, I mean fresh, y'all. And we're going to take some fresh cayenne, pop that in it. We're going to change the game. We're going to change the game. Mix this up right quick. Mix it up. Make sure you get everything. Take your scoop. Pop it right on your waffle maker, y'all. It smells good already. If y'all wasn't hungry, I know y'all hungry now. Set it and forget it, so. Are y'all ready to see what this cheesy goodness is looking like? Mm. Mm. We need smell vision up in here. This the, mm. the butter, the chives, the ginger. Oh my God, it smells so good, y'all. It smells so good. I'm not even putting it on the front because I made it. But it smells so good. Perfect. You see that? Perfect. Mm. This waffle was blessed by food Jesus. I promise you. I promise you. We're going to take this corner off. Good. You hear me? Good. <laughs> so, do y'all remember the chicken that we had marinating? Mm -hmm. It's time to prepare this. So, we have our pan heating up. Now, we got a bowl of flour, some breadcrumbs, and... Some... All about the bird spice by Tele Homemade. We put some in the batter, but we're gonna put some more in the flour. You wanna put your seasoning in there. That's how it should look. The seasoning even smells good, y'all. Then get your breadcrumbs, put some of them on top. Get you a fork, mix that all up. And now what you're gonna do is, you're going to take your chicken, dip it in the flour, then dip it back in the egg, dip it in the flour, then add it to your pan. So the chicken is in the flour, just roll it around, mix it up. You wanna make sure it's completely coated. So the plan originally was to make some honey brandy peaches, but Upon checking my stash, we are all out. So, we're going to change the recipe up a little bit. And we are going to marinate some Granny Smith apples with some pecans, some honey, and of course, a little brandy, y'all. Because if I told y'all we was going to use some brandy, guess what? We using some brandy. Okay, to do this, we're going to need some Granny Smith apples. Mmm. Ooh, they juicy. Chalk. As well as some pecans. A little cinnamon. 
some butter, some honey, and of course, some brandy, y'all. I would tell y'all which brandy I'm using. Just know it's my favorite, but since this isn't a sponsor video, we ain't giving away no free dots. <laughs> now, before we make this brandy, y'all, look at this beautiful piece of chicken. You see that? Mm. We're going to remove this from the grease. We're going to take some butter. Always use a clean utensil. Spray that around your pan. Get your honey. I don't even know why I'm trying to be cute with it, y'all. Just pour that honey right in that pan, y'all. Get it all up in there. gonna take some cinnamon shake that in your pan we're gonna get our apples and our pecans and we're gonna throw that right in the pan and then because I love vanilla so much so 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 much we're gonna put a little bit of that in there then we're gonna take our brandy. You wanna make sure you pour it in the center of your pan because we don't want any forest fires. This house was the most expensive purchase we made, so we don't need it going up in flames. <laughs> so make sure you pour it in the center. A little bit more. Uh, aye, 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 I hear y'all, I hear y'all. A little bit more. <laughs> Take your wooden spoon, and you're just going to mix this in. You're going to saute it for about 10 minutes. You want to make sure you keep movement in your pan, because you do not want it to get sticky. It's rare, especially when you use alcohol. But... Just because it's red, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. I think I'm going to add a few more pecans. Just keep mixing that, keep mixing that. If you want your apples to be soft, you're going to keep it on a little longer. If you prefer a crunchier apple, I love crunchy Granny Smith. You're not going to leave it in that long. Now that I'm about to remove my apples from the stove, I'm going to take that gorgeous crunchy chicken and I'm just going to toss it in this honey brandy. Y'all, oh my gosh. You take your pieces and just toss it in that brandy. This is how it looks. You see that? That's is this is what people is talking about when they say sweet and savory is a beautiful combination now it's time to plate y'all so we got our waffles i'm going to use two waffles because it's prettier that way and then we are going to take our gorgeous piece of chicken we're going to put that right on top of the waffles. Then we're gonna take a spoon full of our apples and pecans, and we just wanna 
pull that on top of the waffles. There's no particular way you have to do it. Just let it go where it wants to go on its own. And just pull some of that sauce right on top. Oh my, y'all see that? Mm. Let's add a few more apples. A little bit more sauce right on top mm. and guess what y'all you are done I'm gonna taste one of these apples Ooh. I'm gonna taste one of these apples in this brandy mm. With a piece of the pecan at the same time. Mm. Oh, one more thing. For those of you who feels like if this is if it's chicken and waffles, you gotta have powdered sugar. I got you. You know your girl comes up head. We're gonna put a little powdered sugar in our little shaker, and we just wanna shake that right on top. Y'all not ready? Y'all not ready for this goodness? And there you have it, y'all. Tell them homemade from my table to yours.